Hello and welcome to the next edition of the S7 Odyssey project. I think I'm finally figuring out exactly what I'm going to do with this project and I'll fill you in on that a little bit later. In this edition we're going to create some new blocks and continue with the program. I hope you enjoy it. In the last video I mentioned that I was going to create some more symbols. You can see here in the symbol table I've created a variety of symbols and then I clicked at the top here to alphabetize them. You can alphabetize symbols by name. You can alphabetize them by address. You can even alphabetize them by data type or by comment. And they'll always appear in alphabetical order. A few more bits that we need here. We have used uh, some M2s. So I'm going to create a couple more. Auto mode. I mentioned last time that you can of course use spaces. We did that, cycle stop permissive. But I tend to um, use what's called camel case. Camel case is capitalizing a middle letter of a word. And then of course we need to put an address in here. We'll use m2.3. It's kind of a funny word, camel case. So we have an auto mode, here's a manual mode. Notice it automatically increments. Okay, I think this is probably all the things that we're going to need. Once I'm done with the symbol table, I do need to save it. It's going to ask me if I save it, if I try to close it anyway. So you'll always have a chance to, to fix that. And then we'll go into our blocks. You can see here I also did create a variable table. I decided to name this junk and I used the variables listed in this variable table. I'll go ahead and show them to you in a different video. So all of these addresses exist here. If I turn on my glasses I can see their status and you can see a lot of the bits and values that I used in a math video that I'm recording at the same time so variable tables are very useful and I called it junk because I'm really not using it for anything specific so sometimes I just open it up and add variables if I need to monitor them or change them that's what variable tables are used for is mostly changing variables We'll go ahead and close that and we'll do a little bit of code here. Now it's difficult even if I say insert network notice that it sticks a network after the function so inserting doesn't place it beforehand so there's a different way if I want to make sure that this rung is before the function call and I'll show you how to do that in a second here. We're going to make an always off bit. Easiest way to do this is just put the normally open and the normally closed in series of the bit. And for sure this logic will always be off. Now what I've found here if I want to rearrange these I can't just drag this like I do in Alan Bradley. I want to cut this and I will paste it and there was my always off bit. Now I'm going to create an always on bit. Another thing about Siemens that is different than Allen Bradley, I cannot do this. This would have been legal in Allen Bradley. I could have just left this always on like this. But if I try to save it, it says the assignment requires a preceding logic operation. So a logical thing to put here, get it, logical thing, is to put the normally closed of the always off bit. Once again, I can't just drag this address. So I just start typing it, and this truly will be always off and always on. We'll go ahead and save it, download it, and take a look at it. I'm turning on my glasses, and I can monitor it. So notice that the always off is indeed off, and the always on is on. 
And that's what we wanted. This area down here, there are a whole bunch of little tabs down here. Cross references are kind of nice, right? I can look at where things were used. Actually, it doesn't show any yet. Um, and I can also see errors. That's probably most importantly when I go offline or if I make a mistake. Sometimes it'll tell you where your mistake is. You can feel free to close that as needed. All right, we're going to go in here and create some other simple logic in this function call. So the first thing we're going to do is create a simple auto and manual mode. We're going to use our auto push button. Let's see, cycle start, cycle stop. Looks to me like we do not have a, uh, a push button yet. If I look at what's been used, I can pretty much freely assign anything that hasn't been used here. I've got an E stop, cycle start, cycle stop. I could also create an HMI push button. Right, and I can use any of these M's. Um, I could also create a data block, but we're going to do that later. Since I don't have one yet, I cannot just type in a uh, symbol here. I don't; it doesn't exist yet, so I can't do that. So we're going to backspace, and I'm going to type in an address directly, and we're going to start using some uh, M100 pluses, and those are going to be reserved for our HMI if we ever create one. So M100.0, this is another method of editing in the symbol table. If I say edit symbols on the symbol that I just typed in, it will actually open up an instance of just that one address and I can call it auto PB. So you can kind of create things on the fly. Um, a lot of times I like using in the symbol table, I like using a lowercase h and then a capital P and a lowercase b for HPB auto push button. But in this case, we're just going to name this auto push button. And I'll go ahead and put the word HMI right in front of it. That way it's clear what this is used for. So I say OK here and there is my nice description. So when I press the auto push button I want to use a set and I want to set auto mode which we created before. Well I just flip it around isn't it? Don't have a symbol showing here. Oh yes I do. I do have a symbol showing here. Okay I want to set auto mode. I want to reset. We'll use a branch and a reset of manual mode. You see why this was convenient to create these ahead of time. Now I'm going to duplicate this rung and set manual mode and reset auto mode with the manual push button. That saves a little bit of time. Right? Another method of doing this actually if, if I flip this into statement list Right, this says and auto push button with the address set auto mode, reset manual mode. And if I copy it this way, this is just a different view. Copy the rung, paste it, and I can type in and m100.1. set M2.4 and reset M2.3 for those of you who really like to type this might be a way that you want to program. I per personally still prefer ladder logic. It's what I grew up with so that's what I tend to use. Go ahead and edit the symbols again.
to make sure it matches the other one we have auto PB manual PB no space okay and we want to make these things kind of match here that's very good to be consistent so I'm going to type in HMI manual push button and this gives me all the information that I might need about that particular address so this is another difference between Siemens and Allen Bradley obviously this is um, IEC calls this instruction list but Siemens calls this statement list STL it's a very common way to program in Europe and in Germany one advantage of this I could easily combine both of these rungs okay and I can title things also so we will save this and I'm gonna flip it back into ladder go up to view ladder and you can see that the editing that I did in statement list also changed it to ladder so at this point this is ready to download we'll save it we've already saved it once go ahead and download it and we will monitor it so one of the reasons you want to monitor things is to make sure that the logic really did get downloaded into the processor and is being called so notice here I did do a call to FC1 if I had not called it this would not be ticking along here it would be stopped and I wouldn't be able to really monitor it now we want to test it I don't have a real HMI I could of course go here and actually use an M register and bring up the same kind of little block here and toggle bits to turn on and off my auto push button manual push button but I can also simply go in here right click modify to one modify to zero so this is just like pushing the button and then letting it go you can see here that now I'm in auto mode okay so in this case now I'm in manual mode and that's how you would monitor these of course another way to monitor them is to put them in the VAT table so we will do that I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my variable table and take a look at junk to do that we go back to the man manager here okay and if I simply type in m2.3 and m2.4 and then hit my glasses I can see the status of these bits so that's what the variable table is used for it's used for changing things but also monitoring things so we'll put this up here go back and toggle it one more time while watching this bit So you can see we went into auto mode, back into manual mode. So this is used for monitoring and of course I could have put M100.0 and M100.1 in here and toggled them from here also. But it's just as easy to right click and hit modify. I think we're going to end this module right here. This is a good place to do it. We've established a uh, auto and manual mode, done a little bit of work in the symbol table and the variable table, and that should do it for now. Thank you.